To start building magic sheets, the first thing I want to do is clear off some of my display settings. So I'm going to come up here, go ahead and remove all of my split screens. I'm going to hide my CIA for today so I can have plenty of screen real estate. And I'm going to add a tab and I want to click on magic sheet. And the first time you get a Magic Sheet tab open, you'll notice that it allows you to create a new Magic Sheet right here. As soon as we create a new Magic Sheet, it instantly dumps us into the editor. So there's a few spaces that I want to point out here before we start building. You'll notice on the right-hand side is my editor, and that contains a couple of sub-areas. At the very top are some of our object and navigation tools. Uh, the top area below that is our object library, and that's where we can pick up objects and insert them into our magic sheet. The area on the bottom half of the editor is our property editor, so any objects we have selected, this is where we can edit the individual properties of those objects. In the middle of the editor is our chevron, and that allows us to close the editor, which will take us back out into our live magic sheet. And anytime we want to edit a magic sheet, we can just navigate to that tab, click the editor open button, and that'll put us back into edit mode. The large space at the center of our screen is our workspace. This is actually where we're going to build our magic sheet. You'll notice we get a grid that we can snap to that can be turned on or off. Also with your mouse, if you roll your wheel in and out, you'll get zoom properties. And if you hold your right mouse button, down and drag that allows you to pan on your magic sheet. Another thing to point out is the quick save button. If you click on the quick save button, it's going to give you a little green check mark. That allows me to set a point in time in my undo history when I'm editing my magic sheet. The software isn't keeping track of every little nudge or move you make, so you'll want to use undo restore points as a way to get back to points in editing your magic sheet. It's important to remember that if you don't create an undo restore point when you create a magic sheet for the first time, it's going to undo the creation of the magic sheet, so be careful there. And if you'll be doing a large amount of editing, you'll want to periodically create restore points so that you can undo to that time. Keep in mind that closing and reopening your editor will also create an undo restore point. So let's go ahead and insert an object. I'm going to grab my mouse and come over to my object library. I can use my scroll wheel to move down. The Magic Sheet Editor allows us to click to pick up an object. And you'll notice that as I move over my workspace, that object is with me. And I can click, and it'll drop it back into the space. And you'll notice some familiar looking handles. All of your blue handles allow you to stretch an edge of the object any way you want. Your green handle allows you to do proportional stretching, so it will lock you into the same constraints. Your white handle allows you to rotate objects. And finally, some objects have pink handles, and those are point handles. So those allow you to actually change the geometry of the object you've inserted. With that object selected, I can start to change some of its properties. You'll notice in the property editor, the first line says color. We've got a couple of different symbols. The first symbol, which is a line, allows me to click on that and select a line weight for that object. And then the next box over is going to be my line color. And in there, you'll notice we get a color picker. So we can choose any of those colors that we like for the outline. Or we can adjust the saturation handle, and that'll allow us to pick different colors. Similarly, we have a fill. We can choose a color for our fill. We also have the ability to select clear. So if we don't want to fill or align weight, we can select that. For now, I'm going to go ahead and put in a color. Below that area is the target field, and this will allow us to assign this object to a target in our show file. So for today, I want to make this be a group. And my target ID allows me to select which group I want this object to represent. So I'm going to put in group one for today. And further down in the property editor, we get fields. Fields are a way for us to take information from the database that's attached to the target and display it. 
So for example, field one by default is showing us our target ID, which is the number of our target. For today, I'm actually gonna change that to target name, and that's gonna tell us that this is a group. Field two, I'm gonna change to target ID, and that's gonna show us that it is group one. And finally, for field three, I'm gonna go ahead and select label, and that's gonna display the label of the group when I'm back out of the editor. You have some keyboard shortcuts that work in here as well. I can say Control C with the object selected to copy it, and then Control V is gonna allow me to paste that object. If I wanna get rid of an object, I can hit the Delete button, and that's going to remove it. So for now, I'm going to shrink this button down a little bit. I'm gonna move it over here. One of the tools I can use is the array tool, and that'll allow us to get several buttons in pretty quickly. I can go up to my alignment tools up here, click on that, and that's going to allow me to find create array. You'll notice that I can do a rectangular array or a circle array, and it allows me to define how many columns and rows that I want, as well as the spacing between them. So for today, I want to do two columns and five rows, and I'm gonna make my spacing between these objects be 15 pixels. So it'll give me a little bit of error between them. So when I hit OK, it's gonna go ahead and create that array for me with all these buttons. Sometimes when we insert new objects, either through an array or a copy or pasting, the board tries to help us with auto numbering these objects, and sometimes it doesn't get it right. So what we can do is come up to our selection tool, and we have a tool here which is called the quick number tool. When we select that, we can choose which target we want to auto number, so we want this to be group, and then we can pick our start. So because we skip two here, I'm gonna make that be two, and we can also select an increment if we wanted to say go by every five. When we hit okay, Everything we click on from this point forward is going to auto number in order. You'll notice one of the things that comes up is a red done button. And that's because every time we click an object from this point forward, it's going to renumber it with the starting number that we gave it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that to make it group two, group three, group four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And when I'm finished, I can hit done, and that will get me out of my auto renumbering tool. The next thing I want to insert is a channel object. So in my object library, I'm going to come over to my fixtures tab. I'm going to grab a moving light unit. Let's drop that in there. And these are going to be our front of house units. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate that to face forward. And I'm going to go ahead and make this channel 101. And in my fields area, I have my channel number here, and you'll notice that every field has the ability to set what its font style is and where the field is located in relation to the object. So if I click on my ABC, I get my font drop down, and that allows me to look at all the different fonts that the system has. If you're not a Tahoma person and you're much more of a Georgia person, that allows you to change that font. And here you can also change the font size. So for example, if I wanted my font to be 25 so that my channel number is larger, I could certainly do that. And you can also change the color, and that's the same color picker that we had before. Just keep in mind that some fields use system color, like channel intensity levels, so those will override any colors that you've picked for them. We also have some settings in here that allow you to give bold, italic, or underline. Also available to you is what I call the checkerboard, and that allows you to pick the justification of that field. So instead of having the intensity be on the front of my light, maybe I want it near the back of my light. And for today, I'm gonna make that also a larger size. And I also wanna get rid of my third field for today. Another thing that's useful in the color settings of the object is I can set either my background or my line weight to link to the channel color and link to the channel intensity. When I link these to my background color, 
what it will do is as soon as I am in live mode, it will represent the color that the fixture is actually in and also the intensity so that I can look at my magic sheet and get a quick view of what all the channels are doing. We'll look at that in just a second. Something that's good practice is if you're going to be modifying a bunch of objects, create one object, do all the changes to set it up the way you want it, and then you can copy and paste it. So now that I have channel 101 done, I'm going to move it into place where it belongs. And I'm going to control C and I want to control V. I'll move it over here, there, there, and there. Again, I'm going to go up and grab my numbering tool, change it to channel. And I want my start to be 102. And as I hit OK, 102, 103, 104, and 105, and don't forget to hit Done. You'll notice that my channels were put in here a little haphazardly, so I can click a box around all these channels to select them all, and I can use my alignment tools to get them in order. So if I click on my alignment tools again, you'll notice that you have a bunch of different options to align things to the right, to the left, center, middle, Keep an eye on what the gold arrows are doing. For example, right now, if I were to align all these channels to the center axis, the gold arrows tell me that they're going to all end up on top of 103, when what I really want to do is align them to their middle, and the gold arrows show me that it's going to snap to the center axis. So just be careful. When I click on that, it's going to align those to the middle. And then also what I can do while I'm in here is distribute them horizontally which will allow me to take 101 through 105 and just evenly distribute them. We can also flip objects. So I'm gonna quickly add some channel boxes here. I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna control C and control V a few of those. So if I put those side by side, if I want to change the order of these, for example, I can grab them, and in my array area at the bottom is flip, and you'll notice that you can flip horizontally, which is around the center axis, uh, or you can flip vertically, which is around the horizontal axis. So if I flip horizontally, you'll notice that those channels now get put in the opposite order, which is really useful depending on how you're laying out your channels. I'm going to come back in here and click on flip. And if we flip vertically, we will flip those guys upside down. You'll notice, though, that my text is upside down as well. And that's because in my flip area, I had flip text position and flip target field positions enabled. I could either leave those unchecked when I flipped, or don't forget in your fields area of your properties, you have the always keep text upright button. And with that checked, regardless of your orientation, your text will read upright. And for today, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those channels.